Okay, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the iPad Pro 2 or the second generation iPad. And because of its new technology with the Apple Pencil, where it's supposed to be more responsive, I just thought I'd give a bit of a demonstration and show it in action as well. So I'll be running you through how I will construct an image like this with all the layers so that then you can hopefully learn from it and maybe have a go at doing it yourself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an image. Now I've just got an image of some different circles within circles and I'm going to just then extend that image so it fills my canvas. I'm going to also change my background colour to something very dark red. I want it to be almost black. And then I'm going to go back to my layer at the top and I'm going to turn the opacity way down. So I can still just about see the circle but it's very faint. I want the darkness to be there because I'm going to be adding lighter colours on top. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer put some dark blue over the top of it just to get rid of some of that kind of warm colour. I'm going to focus around this area, the kind of right on the edge of the pupil. Now if you've ever looked at photos of irises, now I have done this as part of the research, you will see that it's not a smooth kind of finish, it tends to be quite a lot of texture going on. So you will get bits that act like little dashes here and then maybe they join up with the bigger section as they go further out. Now obviously I'm doing quite a, a close-up realistic version. If you were doing a full face with an eye being a small area of it, perhaps you wouldn't do this much detail, but it, I would still argue that it's important to know what is there if you look up close. Then when you do something zoomed out, you'll know what, what should be there, so you'll do it better even if it's a smaller, rougher version. Now if I show you close up, I'm starting the kind of texture on the outside of that dark line. There is a reason for that. I'm going to do something on this part of that line later on. So I want a bit of a gap between the edge of the blue, in this case, and whatever is going to come on that other side to it as well. So that's very deliberate, and you'll see the reason why a little later on. So I just want to start to build up some of the textures. So as you go around, there'll be some bits that are thick chunks, and then there might be a gap between it. And we'll just do that as we go around. So there'll be some bits where they're very close together, and you touch other bits where they're a little bit further apart. So try and make it a little bit kind of random. Okay, so I've done all the way around the edge. The next thing I'm going to do is going to choose a warm colour. I'm going to decide at this point where the light's going to be coming from. Obviously there is going to be a light source somewhere in reality, wherever this eye is placed. I'm going to now choose the light to be coming from the right hand side. Because this is not a flat thing and it is a 3D thing, it will have here on the edge, a part where the light hits. So just along this edge, I'm just going to give a sense that there is a slight sort of edge here that is illuminated. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush down, maybe the opacity up a little bit, and I'm just going to go around this edge and just give it just a little bit of light. It's not the kind of thing that you would see with your naked eye, perhaps, so to speak, but it is there. So if you zoom into an eye, you will see it. So I'll do that a little bit all around as well, but that's going to be the lightest side of it. And I'm going to go back to my blue colour. What I'm going to do is these shapes are going to start widening as they go out. So each one of them kind of fans out and becomes wider. And obviously at certain places they're going to make contact. So if I turn my opacity up just to demonstrate that more clearly, so it starts off here quite narrow, but as it goes further out it widens like that. And the next one will do the same too. Okay, so I'm going to go back to do the opacity on low and continue that effect. Now it's important that you do leave some gaps because there's going to be textures in here that are important. So there should almost be like a, a wave that comes in now at this point. So you might get a few that tend to run next to each other and they have a similar kind of shape. But then you might have a break and then some more that seem to run next to each other. And just keep working your way around. Gaps are important with this, so don't feel that you have to fill in every single part. Leave some areas where there's a gap between them. 
Now clearly not all eyes are going to be the same, so you don't need to worry too much about if there's some variation. Try it some different ways. Sometimes you get less of these sort of wiggly shapes, and that's fine. Now what I'm going to start trying to do now is have like another layer that goes over the top of these and it would start at this point but when it gets to sort of here it'll branch off over the top and it won't pay too much attention to the sort of wiggles that are underneath so I might even shade some of that in a little bit so it doesn't want to be on every one here it wants to be on every other one or maybe even two or three that are separated that's I'm going to turn the size of the brush down Turn the opacity down just to start to fill in some of these areas. Remember this is on a different layer so if it goes wrong it's not a problem but it's around this middle section. Do you know where that actual circle was? That's where I'm actually starting to show this branching off around that ring. If I just show you so you can understand my point. So that ring I hope it shows up. That is the point at which it starts to become something different. As soon as it goes to this layer, it can go over, it can cross over some of the things that are underneath it. So for example, if I start here, it gets to about this point, and then it can start branching off and crossing two or three of the other shapes that are there. Here, for example, then it crosses over and maybe joins up with the other one here and it give it a solid join up at that point. Alright, I'm going to create another layer, and this time I'm going to start bringing in some other colours. Now I've got a kind of quite an earthy green there, or at least it appears that way when it's there. You can see it's very clearly on the kind of yellowy orange spectrum, but when it's a, a greyed out version of it, then it seems more green. Now that'll be especially apparent when I start adding it on top of the blue. So remember, it's on a different layer, so it's not going to upset what we've already got. I can just start to, perhaps a bit more subtly than that introduce it in just to break up the, the monotony of that blue okay so i'm going to go back to a different layer now on top and back to a lighter blue again in fact i'll go for an even lighter blue this time and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start creating a bit more of a feature around that center area there is already a kind of concentration of these features anyway but i'm going to just start really pulling them out a bit more so what I think I need to do is just round off some of these edges. So you can almost imagine that these are joined up as they go around. So there's a line now that perhaps just joins up a lot of these shapes. Okay, I'm not happy with that bit, so that's fine. I'll just get rid of that section. And go back into it. it. Went a bit too far out over here, so that's fine. I'm raining it back in a little bit. Okay, so you've got that edge now to work from, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the brush size up a little bit, and I'm going to use that to sort of fade from that point out. So again, not in all the areas. I'm still going to leave some little gaps here and there like that. But there are going to be areas there like this where it just sort of fades in a little bit more. What you will find is that if the light is coming from a particular side, so if it's coming from up here, this area is going to be the lightest and likewise if the light's coming from over here, this side is going to be the lightest. So I've already made the decision because I've done a light along the edge there, the light's coming from this way, so this section is going to be lighter than that section. I'm going to go back to the dark blue. I'm going to do the same feature here, but it's so it still gives you a sense of a layer on top with gaps in it, but it's not going to be as bright as that. So you still get all the same kind of information, but it'll be a darker version. In fact, I may even go over some of the, the top section here just to subdue it, all the light bits that I've already put in. Okay, what I'm going to do now 
is going to create another layer on top of that and I'm going to go for something really dark at this point. So we can go for my, my darkest blue but then make a really dark version of it. So you, you'd be getting away with using black to be fair but it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the opacity up a little bit more so you can see finer detail at this time. So what I want to do is just create a bit of a solid edge around some of these gaps. So they really become very clear then and I can even add some more in as well. Remember the light's coming from here, so anything on this side would be perhaps more in shadow than on this side of it. But even then, you might get some gaps that go right onto the edge of it. So. Okay, what I'm going to choose to do is really subdue some of this top part as well. I want to exaggerate the, the light coming into this area, like so. And I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to start using some of the warm up colours this time. And I just want to create some sense that in areas there's just speckles of warmer colour. darker version of it for in the shadows. Just create a kind of a sense of a lighter area around the middle section, just a touch, especially on this kind of lower portion here. I feel like now that I've exaggerated the light coming from up here, I probably need to exaggerate the the shadow cast by this edge as well because this is like a bit that sticks up almost so behind it because there's light coming here like I say it's going to cast a shadow immediately underneath it I could spend ages really refining and sharpening up some of these details and I will spend a little bit of time doing this so I'm just going to speed up this section while I just refine and fine tune and then I'll introduce you to the next stage. Okay, so I've created another layer now. I'm going to use the pale blue. I'm going to use it on the soft airbrush. I'm going to keep it sort of, not a very large brush, but not too sharp either. And I want the opacity quite low. And you can still just about see the edge of the circle that I created before, or I added before. And I just want to go around and try and place it as accurately as possible on that sort of dark outline. I'm going to do now with that is just using the Gaussian blur, just soften that a little bit and then I'm going to go around the edge of that again so rather than trying to hit the line this point I'm going to try and hit slightly beyond that line. And I'm just going to again use the Gaussian blur a little bit. I think I'll do this on a new layer in fact. And this time again I'm going to try and get it on the outer edge of this blue circle. So I'm not going over the top of it, I'm just going around the very edge of it. So 
So again, I've just used a Gaussian blur just to soften that once more. And now I'm really going to focus more, trying to get some whiter color over on this side. In fact, I'm gonna to go to the, the bluer version for this side. And for this side, I'm gonna do more warm colors because the light's coming from over here predominantly. So it tends to bring out the colder colors and the shadowy area will bring out the cooler colors. I'll go into the blue, but I'm going for a real white version of that. Turn the brush size up. I'm just going to start filling in this area. So I'm not concerned about the overall eye at this point. I'm just trying to get the eyeball right. Later on, maybe on another video, I'm going to concentrate on trying to get the eyelid and the eyelashes and things like that. But for just the moment, I want to just get the, the kind of general sense of the eyeball that's around it. So I'm going to move back to the warmer colours now for this area. I'm just going to build up some, like I say, some of the even more yellows and oranges. Just going to start adding some slightly more kind of warmer colors just in this side as well a bit more kind of pink as well as the orange so i'm concentrating on it zoomed in now when i zoom out you'll see that obviously we can't see the rest of the eye yet but i'm concentrating on mainly this zoomed in version just go around the edge whilst it's zoomed in so you can see some of the warmth that's what i may do just to represent the eyelid. I might put this on a new layer. Again, I'm not gonna do the detail of this at this point on this video, but I can start to perhaps just represent where the, the eyelid would be, just to give the rest of the eye a little bit more context, perhaps. And then maybe I can just roughly represent the eyelid at the top as well. Again, it's not gonna be full detail now. That's for perhaps the next eye tutorial that I do. I can fill in all the details but I just want to again put it in context so it makes more sense so I'm not even going to zoom back out anymore. So now what I'll start doing on this layer is even start introducing some of the little veins that perhaps you'd only see when you look really close up. So I'm going to go to the, the layer where I put the template initially. I'm going to delete that layer now. And I'm also going to go to the, well, I'm on the layer where I added all the highlights and the dark details. So it's the top texture of the iris. And I'm going to have a dark color on the soft airbrush still, turn the opacity down. So I'm just going to darken up this area. It's underneath the other layers, the white layers on top of it. So you can go right up to the edge of the white there and it won't go over where it's supposed to. Just like that. So it really now exaggerates the idea that there's light above casting a shadow in this area and then hitting this bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there for today. In a future tutorial, I probably would do the rest of the eye and maybe some more of the face as well. But I just wanted, like I say, to demonstrate the pupil and the iris and get those textures right and then the rest of the, the kind of face features would be for a, a future video. And let's say a massive thank you to the people that have already supported me over at my Patreon page. If you want to know more about that, please check the link in the description. You can go and have a look at that. Otherwise, please feel free to look at the rest of my playlists, videos where I do lots of other tutorials like this as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you back here again. See you later.